Good morning. It is still Veterans Day, the 11th day of the 11th month, 2018 in the year of our Lord. It's now about nine o'clock in the morning. It's the second video of the day. I drew up this whiteboard here a couple of weeks ago when I was just putting my mind out and putting it to use. And I like to kind of, a lot of folks, uh, don't have the ability or haven't been trained to think outside the box or see outside the box or uh, spend too much time playing checkers instead of playing chess or Othello or didn't see the different strategies that are played and used in different sports or maybe they're a football fan and they don't understand they're, they're more interested in the quarterback and the wide receivers and the running back and than they are in the linemen that actually do the dirty work to get stuff done. Or baseball, never played it before. Don't understand that the spin of the ball dictates a lot of things that are going to result from it. They're more impressed with the home runs instead of the pitching matchups, etc. Or the picks in basketball that provide, I mean, not everybody's LeBron James that can just run by everybody. <laughs> or or leave Cleveland every time. <laughs> my name is Michael DeCarlos, DeCarlosDanger.com, and my blog. All right, so what we got here is this whiteboard I was drawing up uh, a couple weeks ago. And in the center here, this little peace sign, and this represents all of us here, okay? You as a person, right? But how you're measured by the government is you're just this little piece down here in the bottom, Government's over here. You got to pay it to maintain your safety. And this over here is your moral compass, who you call God, if you call God, Jesus Christ, Allah, whatever. Okay? This is the land of liberty. You can call it whoever you want. Uh, some people even call their God the Prince of the Air, which is really sad, and I, I feel sorry for their souls, but it is what it is. Because in the end, God wins. The creator of all wins. All right, so what we're trying to do is we want to expand you, us, to be this whole circle again instead of only three-fifths of a circle, which, odd, it's like the Constitution all over again, right in your face. Slavery and involuntary servitude may have been abolished, but there's no word in it about voluntary servitude. And when you surrender... 40% of your income, that makes you three-fifths of a person in the eyes of government. Okay? <laughs> Let us start up here. Everybody's concerned with this opioid crisis. Everything in government is upside down or backwards. What does that mean? Well, let's follow this out here and see if we can explain this a little bit. You have the opioid crisis, which in my eyes has is a COBRA effect from Obamacare. It was the first time people were able to actually have pain relief in their life. And when it became too, the profits required it to be, the price to be so high that people could no longer afford it, they went elsewhere. I submit to you that in some cases that drugs called heroin or fentanyl were at one time prescribed to folks. And whether it be oxycodone or whatever they at one time had a, a prescription from a doctor and they may have other people's prescriptions and they call it heroin instead of just prescription medic medical overdose well anyway opioid crisis goes in my eyes to Obamacare which also ties into Afghanistan Afghanistan is the number world's leading producer of opium it didn't used to be until this, I mean, the bad people actually started, those bad uh, ISIS or Al-Qaeda guys actually started destroying those fields. But, you know, then we destroyed them, and now they grow a lot of poppy. We have soldiers guarding poppy fields, folks. That's a fact. All right. What do we got here? Oh, those opium fields are guarded by soldiers, National Guard, and reservists, when they should be the... Uh, 
Department of Agriculture and the Department of State should be involved in that. But, you know, that's about trade and, and growth. And, you know, growing food and sustaining yourself. But we send soldiers over there to do it because the people in the federal government would rather be in your business, in your towns, than doing their job abroad. From there, we go into the Affordable Care Act, which is Obamacare, and it ties together here. The Affordable Care Act is unaffordable, which is no different. It's like I said, everything in government is upside down or backwards. The Affordable Care Act is unaffordable to most Americans, if not all. It's not sustainable. Dun, dun, dun. Which brings us over here to this side. Everything in government is upside down. The No Child Left Behind. What that has done is it has created a Common Core math and Common Core education system that most folks who had a education that was primarily done at the local level, whether it be from the city or the uh, state. In my age, I graduated in 1988 from Avon, Ohio. Wonderful education I got, very well-rounded. I wasn't the greatest student. However, I was a semi, a semi second string varsity athlete. And that was my focus. And I really concentrated mostly, I, I, I went to class to make sure I passed enough to play sports and <laughs> athletics. But those experiences turned out really well in becoming a military leader because different sports are, have different strategies and not everything, you can't do the same thing every time. You have to understand the tools at your disposal and accomplish the mission or task at hand by what you have. So that worked out pretty good. But the No Child Left Behind Act really means every child's left behind. We're, we're too worried about math, how, we, how our kids are doing math, where math can be done in a myriad of different ways. But we're missing the capitalization of words. Capitalization of words means that they're corporate entities. Corporate entities are dead. Uh, corporate entities are beholden to stockholders. Corporate entities are your cities, your towns, your counties, your states, and our federal government. They're beholden to stockholders over their constituents, which means that somebody's the stock that's being held. And I suspect that perhaps if you do a little background, you might come to the same conclusion I did where we're stock, the people. All right? Now... I go down here since we brought in Afghanistan over here. That ties into 9-11, which violated various physic, principles of physics and metallurgy. Steel is a much harder uh, alloy than aluminum. And aluminum, it's almost like if you see a vehicle, the test, test dummies going into a wall. It, would, it doesn't penetrate it, it bounces off. Uh, furthermore, commercial airlines are not built to fly at the same speed when they're at elevation as they are near the ground because the air pressure is much higher toward the ground than up 30,000 feet. <laughs> so the wings would probably file, would have fallen off before they were traveling at those, they say, the speeds that they were traveling at. <clears throat> Plus, jet fuel burns at 1,750 degrees and still melts around 2,500, somewhere around there. But magnesium, if you remember when you were a kid and you did chemistry experiments, it burns in water. And that happens to be something that military weapons have a lot of. But I don't know. About that, it's merely speculation. I'm just talking about the scientific principles and principles of physics. From there we go, you tie in uh, Bin Laden, OBL. But the thing is, is that Bin Laden was actually interviewed three months before the attacks on 9-11. If you have the opportunity to look up a fellow named William Cooper, 
he did a he did a quite a few. Uh, he had actually one of his episodes. He actually predicted 9/11 was going to happen, uh, or something significant. And if you do a little bit of background on, uh, I forget the name of it, but they needed a Pearl Harbor type event to unify folks, and they got it. Sometimes you create it if you need it, and you have the power and the money, you have the ability to do so. Uh, then you can go into Benghazi and go into the USS Liberty attack in the in the sixties. Benghazi, the cover up there, uh, and the Oklahoma City bombing. Little bit of research into that, you can find out that through speculation, it is possible that those of us who served during the first Gulf War were given. Some of us were given faulty vaccines. That study and those papers were in Oklahoma City that day and were destroyed to the explosion. And then the investigation was just to tear it all down and get rid of it. Get rid of the evidence. The Patriot Act is also upside down. It's also upside down. Because it makes people like me who are veterans, people like me who ask questions, people like me who, and, and you, who don't believe everything you're told and do your own research and your own analysis and have a little bit of experience a little bit of education, advice, indoctrination, to see through the smoke screen that is life, that is broadcast through different various channels on networks, on boxes on the wall, and have grown to comprehend that not everything that you see there is fact. Tell you what, I I was bought into that. I was a Fox News junkie for a long time. I haven't really watched television, with the exception of uh, entertainment purposes, for going on a couple of years. <laughs> it's been a few. Matter of fact, uh, if I hadn't gotten married, I wouldn't have DirecTV. <laughs> uh, just watch Ohio State Buckeye football, Cleveland Indians baseball, occasional Cavaliers game, and. I haven't watched the NFL since 1995 when the Cleveland Browns moved to Baltimore. Matter of fact, some in my old uh, occupation, a lot of the stuff that I did was recorded both, uh, not necessarily just on what I wrote down in logs, deck logs, uh, but also audio recording of the audio conversations we had. And I have grown to suspect that my disdain for the Clinton administration earned me an IRS audit. But that's all right. That's water under the bridge or off the duck's ass. I think perhaps... Oh, and you know what? Uh, if this whiteboard thing was worked out and it explained anything in, in the pattern of thought that I'm on, if you can email me and let me know, or make comments and let me know. I'd appreciate that. I think that perhaps uh, may have to start using, maybe get a bigger whiteboard and do a little uh, link analysis to demonstrate my thought process in creating my assessment of the world we live in. You've had the wool pulled over your eyes for a very long time, people. You have. I love you all. I, I really want peace in this world, but there are forces in this world, in this in the air of this world that require uh, conflict by any means necessary and only to turn a profit. If you go back to stockholders and who's the stock, the profit's being turned on your back. I love you all. Peace out. Take care. We'll talk to you later.
Bye.